أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم viewers allow me to send my best greeting to all of you the greeting of Islam and the greeting of the people of Al Jannah and that greeting is assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu today we are here in this month of ramadan we thank allah the almighty today is on the 11th of the month and i believe that muslims all over the world were able to finish the first 10 day in devotion We devote ourselves to Allah the Almighty. We keep our fast according to the way and the manner it was taught and practiced by the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ramadan, I say it and I will repeat, is a very important month. The messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was telling us in a hadith that if you are lucky to fast to keep fast in the whole of the 10 days Allah the Almighty will forgive your sins and I know and most of us also know very well that we are sinners We are sinners. We do commit sins. How many of us do commit sins? Almost all of them, every day. If you were able to get back to the sins you committed for the day, you will know that actually you need to repent to Allah the Almighty. You will know that you will need Allah the Almighty to give you these sins. So. If that must be the case and Allah the Almighty through the Holy Prophet Muhammad is telling us that if you fast the first 10 days your sins will be forgiven by Allah then we have to fast in our belt Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin with fervency and intense devotion I will ask Allah the Almighty to accept our fasting in the first 10 days and that Allah the Almighty strengthen us so that we will be able also to fast the second and even the last 10 days because in those days also there are a very strong promise that if they are uh, done accordingly Allah the Almighty will give rewards you see the month of Ramadan is a big blessing for muslims i can say rightly from the beginning up to the end it is the moon of re- of reflection it is the moon of helping each other taking care of one another which is very important too the messenger of allah In one of the hadiths was telling us that if your fellow muslim keeps fast and at the end of the period you give him or her something to break that fast Allah the almighty will reward you an amount of reward that is given to the fasting muslim which does not reduce anything from his or her own rewards This is why it is important in the month of Ramadan as all other months also to be keeping each other to be helping each other and to be standing by each other ataawun ataawunu alal birri wat taqwa Allah the almighty is telling us in one of the hadith uh, in, a, in one of the verses of the holy quran وتعاونوا على البر والتقوى ولا تعاونوا على الاثم والعدوان help each other 
in the fear of Allah and in kindness. Be kind to people. Be kind to your fellow human beings. Muslims and non-Muslims alike. This is what was taught. And this is what was practiced by the Holy Prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Particularly in the motto of Ramadan. When, he, when Allah the Almighty was telling us in the Holy Quran, وَيُتْئِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَثِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُدْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا That's Allah. Allah the Almighty himself in one of the surahs of the Quran was urging Muslims to be helping each other to stand by each other and then to feed your fellow human being. Somebody who doesn't have anything to live on or somebody he does not have enough to live on. And for you, with the help of Allah, you are enjoying. Your problems financially are solved. Your own, your personal problems are solved, are taken care of by Allah. The needs and the problems of your wife, for example, are taken care of also by Allah through the wealth that he gives you. Even your children are covered. Even your close relatives are covered. If your mind works accordingly, you should know that this wealth is not for me alone. But also, I should extend the hands of help, the hands of assistance to others. Lie, help, help. The Messenger of Allah was telling us in a hadith, that it is not a perfect somebody, a perfect Muslim, that you have enough in your own house and your neighbor is starving, and then you don't stand by him. Your belief and your Islam must be questioned. Yes. Then in the morning of Ramadan, I also would like to remind my brothers and my sisters of this particular fact. Helping each other in the month of Ramadan is very good. We invite all those who can do so not to be miser, do not to be stingy. No. Remember that Allah the Almighty is telling us in the Holy Quran whatever you my brother, my sister, whatever amount of properties, whatever amount of money you may pull out from your pocket and spend and then help your fellow human being, help, you, help your fellow Muslims. Allah is promising you that I will give it to you back. And when Allah is giving it to you back, he may give you more. That whenever you want to, whenever you need something, you need money, this hadith is telling us that if you need something, you need money, for example, just give the little that you have for the sake of Allah. He is going to give you more, particularly in the month of Ramadan. Then my brothers and my sisters, we are neighbors. And Islam Islam values neighborhood. Your neighbors, respect them, stand by them, help them because they are your neighbors. Do not, do not show them any bad character. Do not show them intangible activities. Do not, do not level to them offensive behaviors, but rather be very kind and generous to them. 
because the messenger of Allah in one of the hadith he was telling us the importance of neighbors he said that the angel Jibril whenever the, the, the angel Jibril descends to me bringing me revelation from Allah or telling me anything he does not leave until and unless he, Jibreel, will advise me about my neighbors. That I should be kind to them, that I should be generous to them, that I should not be the source of discord to them. I should not be the source of backbiting to them. No, 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 no. Don't be, do not be like that in this society. Among your brothers, among your Muslim, among your fellow Muslims, and even among non-Muslims, you should not be the source of problem. But rather, you should you should be the source of peace. This is what was taught and practiced by by our Prophet. You can remember, my brothers and sisters, when the Messenger of Allah migrated from Mecca to Yathrib. You know that in Mecca he was chastised. He was punished. He was beaten. He was insulted together with his companions. Those who believe in him those who said that actually we are with you and we are going to stand with you. They also suffered chastisement. They also suffered punishment. They also suffered all sort of discrimination. Yalla. By then he was where? He was in Mecca. That was the 13 year period of Mecca. I think you can remember that the Messenger of Allah spent 13 years in Mecca before, before migrating from Mecca to Yathrib. Yathrib is now called Medina, Medina to Rasul. But before that, it was, it was Yathrib. But when the Messenger of Allah migrated from Mecca to that place, now the, the, now the name was changed from, from Yathrib to Medina to Rasul by the Holy Prophet. Medina, he was welcome. He was giving warm welcome. By who? By the Jews. By the Jews. Not even the only the those who converted to Islam, no, but they were joined also by the Jews to welcome the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when he entered Medina, he was giving a residence. They were at each and every people among the residents of Medina were telling him that come, I would be very happy to lodge you. Some were trying to lead the camel to their houses or homes. Some were trying to lead he him he said, himself to their places. But he allowed them to leave the camel alone because the camel knows where to go. The camel was working on, on the directives. But when he reached Medina and was welcomed by the people, Muslims and Jews alike, he was very kind to all of them. He was very dutiful to call to all of them. He was the first thing he did was to mobilize Muslims and Jews, Muslims and non-Muslims in Medina, telling them that we are here together and we want to live here peacefully. And we cannot live here peacefully if if we are not abided by law. 
look at the Prophet Muhammad. He was trying to create, he, he was trying to bring about a mechanism where all of them, Muslims and non-Muslims, will be able to live peacefully. Why? Because he knew that it is, it is very difficult for the individual to be successful in a society, an environment which is very critical, which is riddled by fighting, by insulting each other, by looking low upon each other, that he said, let us come together so that we prepare our rules and regulations. That's why, my brothers and sisters, if you go to the Islamic history, you will know that he was the one who initiated, initiated and established the constitution of Medina. We call it the constitution of Medina, that we should live in peace. Some of the clauses of that constitution is that we are going to live together, yes. You, the Jews, if any power, if any attacker's power happens to come to Medina to attack you people, we, the Muslims, should either stand by you and support you to push it back, or at least we should re remain neutral. But we do not have to assist to accomplish those powers that have come to attack you because you are our neighbors. But you also equally, if any power comes from anywhere else to attack us Muslims, we want you to either stand by us to push it back or at least be neutral. Look at this beautiful idea that was introduced by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he entered Medina. That is why, my brothers and sisters, I will remember here that the Messenger of Allah was chosen not only by Muslims, no, but by Muslims and non-Muslims to be their religious and the political leader, to be their spiritual leader that, we, that they, were, they were listening to. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is the way he was able, mashallah, uh, to live peacefully in Medina. Look at Makkah. It was different in Makkah. The people of Makkah, the people of Makkah were very wicked on him. And uh, perhaps because they were not educated, or they were not deep, deeply educated. Maybe that was the reason. Because they plunged themselves into the worship of man-made gods. People of Mecca, all of us can remember that they entered and they were deeply rooted in the worship of different forms of God. They were unlike the Jews. The Jews still now, up till the moment the Messenger of Allah entered Medina, entered Yathrib, they, they were following Prophet Musa. They were still now, they were holding fast to their Prophet Musa, alayhi salam. Jews, yes. To give you one, one, uh, a proof of that, my viewers, my brothers and sisters, to give you a proof that the Jews, up to the time the Messenger of Allah entered Medina, they were very committed to their religion. That is the religion that was brought and practiced or that was revealed by Allah through the Prophet Musa, alayhi salam. Musa, he, he was a prophet. A messenger of Allah. We believe in that, all Muslims. 
You know, a Muslim is the one who believes in all prophets. Rightly from, rightly, uh, from the, uh, the prophet Adam alayhi salam, the father of humanity, prophet Adam, prophet Cis, prophet uh, Noah, all of them, up to prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, up to prophet Yehud, Lut, Suleiman, and all others. A Muslim have to believe in all. Up to the Prophet Musa alayhi salam. Call Moses in the Christian term. Up to the Prophet Jesus. Isa alayhi salam. No Muslim is considered a believer if he or she does not believe in all of them as prophets and messengers of Allah who were sent by Allah to guide humanity to the right path, all of them. You see, that is why the messenger of Allah found the people of Medina still now holding fast to the teachings of Musa. When he reached there, before he reached Medina, there was no fasting. But when he reached Medina, he came... He came to understand that in the first Islamic calendar, the first month of the Islamic calendar on the tenth, he found out that Jews were keeping fast on that particular day. He asked them, but what is this? They told him that yeah, because uh, this is the way in which Allah the Almighty saved our uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salam from Fir'aun, Pharaoh, Pharaoh who mobilized his armed his arm forces and then they were chasing Musa to harm Musa and his followers. When they reached the Red Sea, Allah the Almighty saved the prophet Musa and Pharaoh and his people drawn and died in the sea. Prophet Musa, when that day returned, he kept fast on that particular day to remember to thank Allah the Almighty for saving him from the harm of Pharaoh. When he did that, we the Jews also, is, is that what we are doing? Because he was our prophet and we have to follow his teachings. The messenger of Allah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Ah! I also will fast it like you do. And I also will advise my followers to fast it. Why? Because Musa was a prophet and a messenger of Allah. I also am a prophet and a messenger of Allah. And Allah the Almighty is telling us in the Holy Quran, La nufariqo bayna ahadim mir rusuli. We do not discriminate against anybody among the prophets and the messengers of Allah. That's why I'm saying that we Muslims believe in all. Salatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Then he started fasting that day. Then the Jews of Medina also, actually, we are able to convert. How many of them? They are converting in their large numbers. When? When the messenger of Allah read to them the verses of Quran, when they knew that this, there is no doubt, they themselves, the Jews, I mean, they said that we don't have any doubt, an iota of doubt that what this man is reading or reciting emanated from the same source of our book the book that was introduced to us by Musa alayhi salam. Look at them. They started converting to Islam in their large numbers by tribes. Banu Quraida came and they converted. Banu Nadir also converted. 
Banu Kainuka also came. All these ones are big tribes in Medina. They came and converted. And then they had an agreement with the Holy Prophet, special one, that we are not going to infringe this agreement. We are here with you. We are going to support you. MashaAllah. Until and unless when they were moved by the advent, by the coming of the Meccan pagans against Islam. My brothers and sisters, I started discussing the Meccan period. It should be understood particularly in this month of Ramadan. Because nobody is able to fast Ramadan and be rewarded by Allah if he or she does not have what we call Tawheed. It's a very important principle in religion, in Islam. What is Tawheed? Tawheed is the belief and the worship of Allah, of one Allah. This is Tawheed. All prophets, my brothers and my sisters, all the messengers of Allah, when they came to their own people, they came with the same principle, the same ideas. Believe in one Allah and dedicate your worship to him. This is what they, 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 they were calling their people to. Believe in one Allah and then worship him alone. Do not associate partners or partner with Allah in worship. There is no other partner deserve to be worshipped apart from him. Allah. Because he is the one who created you. He is the one who brought you into this world. He is the one who made you a human being. And then he is the one who supplied you with five common senses. No other person did that for you. But Allah. He could have created you as a donkey. You would not have been able to do anything about it. He could have created you as a dog. As a cat. As anything else, cow, but no, he created as a he created you as a human being, invested in your five common sense, made you a human being, sent a prophet, a messenger to you, to help you, to guide you, reveal holy book to you, to help you, companions. We are there supporting. Companions of Allah we are here supporting. Even after the demise of the Holy Prophet, they were there teaching, carrying out the work of da'wah. The work of da'wah. The work of teaching people the unity of Allah, that Allah is only one. The oneness of Allah, that Allah is one. And Allah is the only one also who should be worshipped. In our society, my brothers and my sisters, in so many cases, you will see somebody who will say that I believe in Allah. I know that Allah is the one who created me. He is the one who created my father. He is the one who created my mother. Who is the one who created the whole world, the sky, the earth, and what? Trees. Then, I'm a Muslim. We say yes. But uh, there's an other important principle that also you should show. You should show you believe in it. You cannot just say that he's the one who created. Yes, it's true. What you have said is, is the truth, yes. He, he is the one who created you, created your father, created your mother, created the whole world. It's true. We accept that one. But also the other uh, form of Tawheed, to support this one, you cannot leave it behind. Because that one is important. I can even say that 
No, I don't have the audacity, but I would have said that it is more, more important. That is what we call At-Tawheedul Ilahi. The first one is At-Tawheedul Rububi. At-Tawheedul Rububiya. But this second one is At-Tawheedul Ilahi. At-Tawheedul Ilahiya. What does that mean? It means the Tawheed of the worship that Allah when you created me, created everything, now what is my duty? Now what should I do? Aha, look at it. You are now listening, you are now waiting for Allah to give you the answer. Now I accept. You created me. I didn't pay anything. My parents, they didn't pay you. They are the trees and the human being. And you are the one who made me a human being. Respected. And then you value us. Allah is telling us always, Lakad karramna bani Adam. I, Allah, I honor the sons and, and the daughters of Adam alayhi salam. So now, you have done all these things to me. Now, what is expected from me? It's important. You should ask yourself. You cannot be a somebody that Allah created and then you just go about things fumbling. No. Where are your five common sense? Why don't you think? Who created me and for what? Why? Huh? He could have ignored me. He could have done something else, but he created me as a human being. So uh, what should I do now? Towards that creator is to, is to dedicate your worship to him. This is what they call Atawheedul Ilahiya or Atawheedul Ilahi or Atawheed Al Qasdu Al Amal, Atawheedul Amali. To be ready to worship him alone. Do not worship anything else except Allah. If you worship anything Allah, meaning that you are creating a partner or partners with him, he does not accept that. Shirk billah. He won't Muslims. He won't the believers. In Allah la yaghfiru an yusraka bihi. Wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika lima yasa. I, Allah, do not forgive people who associate partner or partners with me. I will not forgive them. No. وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَٰلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ But yes, if he likes, if I like, I can forgive anyone else who is not committing that particular sin. Once the sin that you committed is not associating partner or partner with Allah, However grave it may be, Allah is telling you that, yes, I can forgive. But the sin of Sirki, he said, no. No, 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 no. That one, he does not accept it. And that was the worship, and that was the manner and the life of people of Makkah. They erected about, six, about 360 idols. Hubal is among them. Allah was there. Al-Manata is there. Al-Usa also was, was there. They used to worship these, these idols. Paying homage to these idols. Thinking that it is these idols that should be worshipped. But with all that also, they knew very well that we are worshipping them. But they are not our creators. No. They... they these, these sticks and stones that we worship are not our creators. Our creator is Allah. That belief was deeply rooted in their heart. Yes. That's why Allah the Almighty is telling us in the Holy Quran. Allah the Almighty was talking to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. 
telling him that if you happen to ask the people of market these pagans, who created you? You are worshiping these sticks and stones. You are worshiping places. What happened? Who created you? Tell us. They will say, they undoubtedly will say, ah, our creator is Allah. Uh -huh. Then, why don't you worship him alone? And then you worship these diverse issues, these different, different things, sticks, stones, human beings, trees, and the like. They say, ah, we, we believe that we are too inferior to worship Allah directly. We are too small. We cannot worship him directly and he hears us. No. Uh, but that's why we are channeling our worship through these, uh, these sticks and stones, these idols, so that they will convey our worship to the actual and the real Allah, so that uh, Allah will hear. The Holy Quran says no. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِّيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ دَعِي إِذَا دَعَانِي Tell them that I am closer to them than they are juggler veins. Whatever act of worship they utter, they perform, I hear it and I know it to its letter. It doesn't need to worship any other thing as a mediator between I, Allah, and them. Masha'Allah. So my brothers and sisters, our brothers uh, who are here with me, with me in the studio, I believe are, are telling us that the time allocated to me has almost elapsed. I would like to send my best greeting to everybody. I would like to ask Allah the Almighty to help us and to strengthen us so that we will be able to, to finish the month of Ramadan in sincere fasting and all other coming, and so many coming uh, months of Ramadan. So this is your brother, Imam Sheikh Tijan Cha, also double as vice principal of Kodi Senior Secondary School, uh, saying, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.